Hello everyone, my name is Blaine Pearson and I'm a graduate instructor in Texas Tech's Personal Financial Planning Program. In this video, we're going to review how to calculate holding period return. Holding period return quite simply means, as the title implies, the return on an investment or an asset that you received while holding the security or the asset. So quite literally, it is the holding period return. So let's take a look at an example. We would take the selling price of an asset minus the purchase price of that asset plus any cash flows from dividend, interest income, or other types of inflows or potentially outflows divided by the purchase price or the amount of equity invested. Let's take a look at an example. Your client purchased 100 shares of Exxon stock at $10 per share, and one year later she sold her shares for $20 per share. For this example, we're going to assume that Exxon does not pay a dividend and there are no other cash flows. So what is your client's holding period return? Please pause the video and work the problem. To solve the problem, you should have taken 100 shares and times it by the ending amount or the selling amount of the shares. You then subtract that from the 100 shares originally purchased at $10 per share. Your denominator is also the amount you originally purchased. The result of this should be a 100% gain. Now let's take a look at an example where we have cash flows. Now in this cash flow situation, we have a dividend. So it's under the same set of circumstances where the client purchases 100 shares of Exxon at $10 a share. She then sells those shares for $20 a share as with the prior example. However, we're going to assume that Exxon pays a 25 cents dividend per share at the end of the year. Now let's calculate the client's holding period return. Please pause the video and attempt to arrive at a solution. Your answer should look like this. As with the prior example, we had the 100 shares at $20 a share that we sold at, minus the original investment amount. But here, we need to add the additional cash flow of the 100 shares, and then each one of those shares received a 25 cents dividend. We then take all of that and divide it by the original purchase amount. So we know that this should be greater than 100%. Let's take a look at one other example. We're going to look at holding period return whenever returns are given to us in interest form. This is the formula that will be provided on all tests as well as a CFP to compute the holding period return when we are given interest rates. Let's take a look at an example. Your client purchased Exxon shares January 1st. The monthly returns of Exxon are 2% in January 3% in February, and 4% in March. She then sells those shares at the end of March. So what is her three month holding period return? Please pause the video and attempt to arrive at a solution. The holding period return should be one plus 2% or 0 0.02 times 1 plus 0 0.03 times 1 plus 0 0.04. After the math is done here, we then minus 1. This will give us our holding period return. Again, this is Blaine Pearson, and in this video, we covered how to calculate holding period return. Thank you for watching.